Ryan, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. In front of you tonight is the proposal for design, engineering, and construction services for the reconstruction of Goff Street from Oak to Palmer, which also includes the replacement of the water main. The project will consist of full reconstruction of Goff, similar to what was done on Cass Street this year with four inches of asphalt over a 10 inch base. It will also include the removal and replacement of all storm sewer crossings, as well as ADA uh, sidewalk handicap ramps at Palmer Street. Also will include, currently there's only sidewalk that's on the east side of Goff from Palmer about halfway down. We'll have an alternate bid as part of the project to extend that sidewalk all the way down to Oak Street on the uh, east side as well. And then we'll be looking at replacing the water main, which is currently a six inch water main. We'll replace that with an eight inch water main. We'll replace all the uh, water services from the water main to the right of way line, unless it's a lead water service based on the new lead and copper rules by MDEQ. If we run into any lead water services, we'll have to replace those services from the main to the house. Project cost is roughly $1.1 million is what's estimated of that. Almost $700,000 of that would be part of the street reconstruction and funded under the road millage. The remaining $420,000 that's estimated would come out of the water and sewer fund for the water main replacement. If you have any questions, I'll entertain those. Is there a reason why the sewer uh, wasn't part of this replacement? The sanitary sewer? That I don't, I guess it wasn't brought up as far as any replacement for the sanitary sewer. We can, we'll, we'll look at that as part of the design as far as the bill? latest. No. We would look at the latest videos that were taken on the sanitary sewer to see if there were any repairs that were needed and we would include those. We did that on 3rd Street this year. We did have two repairs that we needed to make that where there was sanitary sewer underneath the road. We would look at that as part of this. So, so if you find those uh, repairs necessary, when you find them, we'll take a Correct, yes. This is about what we figured it was going to cost. I'd make a motion to approve. I'll support that. Uh -huh. All right, motion based support questions. Call the roll, please. Watt? Yes. Ellery? Yes. Kinsvater? Yes. Koopa? Yes. Laporte? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Uh -huh. Cedar? Yes. Carrie Good. Thank you. That's well needed project. B approve engineering service for North Riverside Sewer Improvement Project. Ryan Sue. All right. Uh, a couple meetings ago, I was in front of you in regards to the North Riverside Sanitary Sewer, and we were looking at relocating three sections, three sections of that sewer that were close to the to the St. Clair River, or they were running underneath uh, auxiliary buildings or uh, boathouses. Uh, we went back and per council's recommendation, we went back and put together a few more estimates and alternatives looking at the possibility of rerouting the sewage from those homes to the existing sanitary sewer on Riverside Avenue, on the west side of Riverside Avenue. We've provided those estimates to you. Um, the cost of that is roughly $1.3 million to do that versus the $470,000 that was proposed to do the relocations of the three sections of the existing sewer running along the river, bringing that, relocating that sewer further away from the river. Uh, the cost of or rerouting those service leads, basically new leads would have to be ran from the back of those homes out around the home and out to Riverside Avenue. Each home would have to have a grinder pump and that sewage would have to be forced up to Riverside Avenue. In addition, there's additional costs with the existing sewer being underneath the sidewalk on the west side of Riverside Avenue, so there would be extensive sidewalk removal and replacement and potentially pavement removal and replacement on the southbound uh, lane of Riverside Avenue as well. Um, in addition, there's also costs with the abandonment of the existing sewer along the river as well as the abandonment of the two pump stations. We did provide a second estimate that looked at only rerouting those homes that are upstream of the pump stations because the existing sewer downstream of the Northern Lake pump station was in good to fair condition. So we've also looked at just rerouting those homes that are north of the uh, pump stations. That cost was $970,000, so still quite a bit more than what was estimated to do the relocation, as well as rehabilitating those sections of sewer that wouldn't be relocating with liners where we have um, cracked pipe or infiltration coming through the pipe joints. So our recommendation would be to 
basically go forward with the relocation of those three sections that we proposed previously and doing the rehabilitation where necessary in the existing sewer. Ryan, as far as uh, doing the first proposal that you brought to us, were the easements, are, are we all set for the easements down on the? We've still got to look at the easements as far as what easements would still need, uh, we would still need in order to do the relocation. Would we be, be, be doing a trade from the existing easement that we have now to a new easement? Is that how we would, we would package that? Yeah, there would, there, we'd have to look at that. There could be some vacation of some existing easements depending on how we reroute that. We'd have to look into that further. Uh, uh, the suggestion you have, the, the third one, uh, the total is quite a bit less. On the third option, what up? Uh, explain the difference. Which option is this? option three? The one for six hundred twenty-five thousand. I think that's that's doing the, the sewer down on the on the river side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be yeah. So the total yeah the construction cost is four hundred sixty-eight thousand with engineering six hundred twenty-five thousand. That estimate is just for the relocation of the three sections that we were proposing originally when I was here a couple of meetings ago, as well as rehabilitation of the sewers. So. But you just stated that that was about 900,000. 900,000 was for not rerouting all of the homes to the existing sewer on the west side of Riverside Avenue. It would only be those homes upstream of the pump station. So instead of all 30 homes, we would only be rerouting about 20 homes. And we looked at that just because the, the sewer between the two pump stations is in good air condition. There's not a whole lot of rehab work that needs to be done in that section. So what's your recommendation? My recommendation would move forward with the relocation of the three sections and doing rehab within the existing sewer because of the cost. You think that'll fit? Okay. So that's Ryan, Ryan, we've been talking about this all along, but when we do this, I heard estimates that our sewer capacity will probably increase by about 100,000 gallons a day because we're treating river water that we don't need to be treating. Correct, yes, there, yeah, it would be a significant reduction <clears throat> in groundwater, groundwater and basically river flow going into the sewer, yes. So by relocating these sewers and tightening up the existing sewer with the rehabilitation, you would have a significant reduction in that flow, which would provide for additional capacity at your plant. Yeah. So your recommendation is which one? Recommendation would be the basically alternative three, as you would say, for six hundred twenty-five thousand in total to do the relocation and rehab of the existing sewer. Which was the original proposal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the original proposal that was presented. I'll make a motion to go with uh, yeah. the six twenty-four. All right, the motion made support. A question. Call the roll, please. Ellery. Yes. Ken Spatter. Yes. Kufa. Yes. Laporte. Yes. McCartney. Yes. What? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Carrie Drowner? Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. See adopt MERS, define contribution plan agreement, and approve addendums. This is the needed MERS documentation to change our AFSME kind of, uh, retirement plans that we just re renegotiated with uh, our union. Motion to approve. Order. Questions? Call the roll, please. Ken Spatter? Yes. Koopa? Yes. Hort? Yes. McCartney? Yep. Flat? Yes. Ellery? Yes. Dieter? Yes. Terry Drenner? Thank you. <coughs> all right, Chief, we've got three special events. Do you want these, do you want to do them all together or do you want them separate? All right. <laughs> DE and F are special events for the St. Clair Chamber Commerce Lantern Walk, Commerce Christmas Market in downtown Holiday Lights, and the St. Clair Chamber of Commerce Ice Carvings, D through F. Chief? That's from the Chamber of Commerce. All their paperwork's in. I don't, if you want an explanation of them, the Lantern Walk is going to be like the Halloween Walk over here at Greg Park. The Christmas Market is all the local vendors in the plaza and local restaurants. The holiday lights are just all the lights on the plaza and ice carvings will be throughout town. Motion to approve all three. Support. Any questions? Mm -hmm. First, say aye. aye. How, about, how about four? Was there four? All four. I do have a question. I only see three. 
Holiday Lantern Wall, Christmas Market, Plaza Holiday Lights, and the Ice Cart. Yeah, on the sheet on your agenda, I think E it covers D, two of them. No. E's um, got two. We approved all of those, Annette. Yes. I did have a question on that, Your Honor. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Why would we need to approve the Plaza Holiday and Lights? Or the, I'm not sorry, I'm just, the Christmas market. Why would we, why would we need to approve that? Uh, because all special events that happen within city limits require special That's a special event. events that stores are going to sell something? They're having a tent in the courtyard. Their and courtyard. inviting people to <laughs> sell like a, um, okay. like a Christmas market. Right. With it's their courtyard. So. I just wonder why we'd have to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Number nine's claims and accounts for November 5th and 13th, 2020. Yes, um, there was a motion and a second, but. We need a vote? Correct. We need to do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. It's called having my back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Number nine claims of the council November 5 and 13, 2020. Any no questions, Your Honor? I make the motion to approve as presented. Support. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Number 10 is public comments and questions. If anybody have any non agenda items, we'll limit you to three minutes, please. If anybody has anything on their mind. Kern again with Anderson X on Westbrook. I just wanted to mention that uh, originally this Thursday we had scheduled a meeting with the public on the Clinton Avenue bikeway uh, project because of the COVID-19 restrictions. We're going to have to uh, postpone that meeting. Uh, if anybody does have any questions or concerns regarding the Clinton Avenue bikeway project, I do suggest that they send those questions in writing to uh, my attention or my office's attention. And they can send those by email to my address, which is rkern, R-K-E-R-N, at aewinc.com. We hope to hopefully po or reschedule this meeting after the first of the year. We were planning on having two public uh, meetings for the project. This one was basically just to hear from the public to uh, basically get any questions or concerns they might have in the project as we're be starting to uh, begin the design process. And then we were hoping to have a second meeting after the design is complete. So we may end up just having one meeting as we get closer to the uh, completion of the design. But I uh, just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention here. If they do have any written comments, to, don't be afraid to contact me and I'll get back with them. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? We'll go number 11, Mayor and City Council. Uh, I'll just reiterate the meeting for this Thursday is postponed. We'll uh, try to reschedule. I've got a comment, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Councilman Cuffa on his re-election and Mr. Bowles on your election. Congratulations. And also kind of want to bring up um, some of the, I think, misunderstandings of our, our ward system and what's going on. I know it was brought to my attention that this is, was addressed, I believe, in, in 2018 and nothing really happened with it. But it's a little bit what I took a look at some research, it's, it's a little bit misleading. In our charter, it basically says that we have to have three wards, that you don't have to necessarily live in your ward to represent your ward. But it says on our website that the St. Clair County, the St. Clair City Council consists of the mayor and, a count, and six council members. The mayor is elected by the voters of the city at large for a two-year term. Council members are then elected by the voters of their ward for a two-year term. Well, that didn't happen. So I know a lot of times we talked about having the ward system set up because we don't necessarily want six people from one part of the city actually representing the whole city. So there's a ward system set up. But we really have to make it a little bit clearer about what we're going to do. And I would recommend that our next board meeting, we simply have a, you know, a simple vote up or down, really to give the people a choice what they want to do. I mean, the way I look at it, there's three different options. You do nothing, you keep everything the way it is, and people can vote, can run in whatever ward they want to run in. You know, keep it exactly the, way the, same, the, the same way it is. The second option is you have to live in the ward that you run in. And if you happen to move during that term, you finish out your term, but you're not able to run in that ward again if you've moved out of the ward. And the third thing is we don't have a ward system at all and just let take the top six vote getters. So that's what I'd like to throw out to the council for consideration because this is a process that has to be done. We'd like to, it'd be nice to give the people of the city of St. Clair a chance to vote in May, 
so that this can be implemented. So if people are interested in running in 2022, it'll be all set up because it is a process that takes a little bit of time. And talking with Attorney Downey, there's a lot of language that you guys worked on in 2018 that the work has already done. So I would just recommend that you consider this and then we take it one step further and allow basically the city of the people of the city of St. Clair to make a decision of how they would like to be represented. John, I agree with you. Unless you make an motion and make it a point to have that done, it, it won't ever be discussed again. Well, that, that's why I'm making a motion right now that we put I, it. I on, didn't hear your motion. That I we put it on the agenda for next for December 7th. We put it on that agenda. I wanted it on this agenda. It didn't get put on. It needs to. We need to address it. Yeah, when I talked to Warren about this, and I, we, we thought maybe a work session would like, might be good We've for those. It doesn't need to be a work session, Bill. No? Okay. I mean, we just basically got to give the people a chance if they want to vote. Let, give them the choice to decide how they want to be represented. I mean, really, we have two different choices here. And I mean, what Councilman Cuffa did was totally within our guidelines. He didn't do anything wrong. It's just a little bit misleading. And the people